Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Monday. All right guys, well it's Monday, which means it's a great, it's a great day to be alive. When the sun's still shining and I close my eyes. No? <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna sing for you. I'm actually not allowed to sing in my house, that's like a cardinal rule, but Jason is in New York, so I can do whatever I want right now, unless my mom hears me and she's like, shut up. And then that's a little bit different. But I've had four shots of espresso. I did my little morning walk. I've had my breakfast and my caffeine, my workout. I'm like good. I'm ready to hit the road running, especially with these topics. Kim Zolciak, Shannon Bador, Vicky Gumbelson, and the Real Housewives of Dubai. Yeah, you better believe we're going to talk about it. But I want to start here. So before we jump in, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, pop off in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and let's jump right in. Thank you to Breaking the Rules Pod. It's hard for me and hearing you say that and Vicky, you've been here from the beginning. When we Hold on one second. What's hard for me and hearing you say that? Um, it's not working for them. Well, that sucks. Well, apparently, I'll just go ahead and tell you guys what it is. I don't know why the audio is not working for them. Vicky ended up helping Shannon, helping her. Did not know. Vicky, you've been she here said, from the beginning. Vicky when came there, and London, she was there from the beginning. And when they wrapped in London, Emily her and Gina and Emily back and Katie in were back room, in their room. Not camera or anything. And, and, and no off camera, camera everybody nothing. was like, it's too it much. Camera, like, this, we have reached a new low. Like, it's too dark. Like it's too toxic. Right? left early on her trip, and that was so sad. And she didn't want to go anymore. Yeah, we talked for the whole night. And she's like, she reached out to Vicky Gumbelson, and she was like, hey, can you help me get out of here? Can you help me figure out how to get out of here? And that's exactly what happened. But since we can't hear the audio, which I think is absolutely freaking ridiculous, and that's fine. Um, it's okay. We'll just move on from that. But for Shannon and Vicky, I actually, a lot of people keep asking me before we move on, do you think that Shannon and Vicky will be on the show again together? And the way that they're treating Vanderpump Rules after Vanderpump Rules just made a shit ton of money during Scandaball for the network with so many new viewers going back and watching the show, um, hitting the ads. I mean, they made so much money. I don't know if they would. I don't think that they would ever bring Vicky back. If they brought Vicky back, she would probably have to take a pay cut. That would be like massive like half of her pay would have to go down the drain and be like just her understanding okay instead of getting 1.1 1.2 million you're getting about half a million but you get the fame you get all of the stuff that comes with it if i were her i would take the half a million it's so much money to film three months like but i think that there's a lot of ego involved in it too anyways let's move on Let's go over to the Kim Zolciak of it all, shall we? Thank you to Reality Blurb. Kim Zolciak's estranged husband, former NFL player Croy Bierman, is said to be considering filing for bankruptcy amid their ongoing money woes. Now, after reportedly spending over $2,000 to have his divorce attorney tune into the 46-year-old Real Housewives of Atlanta alum's appearance on The Surreal Life, and as his and Kim's marital home nears its auction date, Croy allegedly requested his lawyer look into his options for bankruptcy. According to court documents obtained by In Touch Weekly on November 13th, Croy's divorce attorney, Ryan Proctor, filed a motion in which it was confirmed that he'd recently sent an $18,100 invoice to Croy and that Croy owes his firm a total of $79,000 as of October 17th. But also in the documents, it was noted that Croy began bankruptcy discussions with his attorney in August, prompting him to conduct more than three hours of research into Croy's options. Now, the following month, on September 10th, the men had conversations about the pros and cons of bankruptcy and also spoke of Croy's possible bankruptcy strategy. But the following day, Croy and his attorney spent three hours on the phone to discuss the matter, and shortly thereafter, they spoke for an additional hour and a half about the topic. Also in September, the lawyer billed Croy for watching Kim in surreal life and noting her mention of divorce or 
disparaging client. Now, as Atlanta fans may have seen, Kim sparked romance rumors with Chet Hanks, Tom Hanks' son, during her filming in Columbia, and she was just with him recently. But since Kim and Corey split in May of 2023, they faced a number of financial struggles, including a $1 million tax lien from the IRS, several lawsuits, the impending foreclosure of their home, their seven-bedroom, 11-bathroom home. And although Kim and Croy, who starred alongside one another for eight seasons of Don't Be Tardy, attempted to block the foreclosure of their Georgia mansion, which they listed for sale over a year ago, and they've been unable to do so. They've also been unable to unload the property despite making a number of price cuts. But after Kim allegedly shut down numerous potential sales because she didn't think the offers were good enough, Croy went to court in an effort to force the sale of the home in September. And months later, TMZ confirmed that the property would hit the auction block on December 3rd. But as noted in their November 27th report, Kim and Croy have continued to live in the home since their split. And during an outing a couple weeks ago, Kim accused Croy of refusing to pay their bill, stating that things had gotten so bad that her oldest daughter, Brielle offered some help. So the most recent price cut dropped the price of Kim and Croy's mansion, which they listed for $6 million in October of 2023, down to just under $4 million. Wow. Um, him filing bankruptcy, to me, is not that crazy. So I believe there's a Chapter 7, a Chapter 11, and a Chapter 13 when it comes to bankruptcies. I don't know the differences, but... I'm pretty sure when you file for bankruptcy, what they do is they take your total debt and you give up any actual assets that you have. So if you have cars, homes, jewelry, um, expensive clothes, toys, gadgets, golf carts, motorcycles, you give all of that back to them, back to the bank. The bank auctions it off. They take X amount of money and then they put that towards the debt that you owe and then an attorney i think if i have this right um an attorney will now take the remainder of that debt divide it by however many years that you're willing to make the payments and i think it's usually like five or something so they divide that and that's your monthly payment but then you're free of the debt you're just not free to um like you can't go get a new car you can't put your name on a house you can't do things like that for like the next five or maybe even seven years, you're just kind of screwed, but it does help alleviate the debt and it puts you on a, a structure, like a, a scheduling payment structure where you can be able to get away with this. And I think that that might make sense for him. But hold on, last but not least, this part. So I don't know if you guys saw this, but Bravo Snarkside said, girl, you literally said last month that nobody knew anything and you didn't know where the rumors of Real Housewives of Dubai not coming back were coming from. Now, suddenly, you knew as soon as filming ended and apparently told Lisa Milan. Well, you guys know I love Caroline Brooks, but there was something that came out on X saying, according to Lisa Milan, the hashtag Real Housewives of Dubai cast was 100% expecting to be renewed for season three, meaning that they were just as shocked as fans when Bravo put the show on pause. She said maybe at Lisa Milan meant the rest of the cast, but I certainly informed her it was not returning for a third season prior to the cast being told as a whole. I also told Chanel Ayan months ago right after Lisa, and I understand why the rest of the cast hope otherwise, but I knew. Hmm. She also said... There are like three blob, uh, Bravo blogs confirming our third season when the cast has been told nothing. Blogs don't know before we know, unfortunately. Um, hopefully an announcement is made soon. But for now, everyone hold your horses and calm down. And not sure where all of these Dubai rumors are coming from. Bravo has not announced anything. And our entire cast has not been told anything. So I thought I might share that since there are people teasing and debunking rumors just saying that it's giving thirsty and calm down mm. all right guys let me know what your thoughts are pop off in the comment section if you're not subscribed get subscribed don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time love you guys